Welcome to this clinical skills revision video. This video is designed to help you prepare and revise for undertaking vital signs for your patients. Please use in conjunction with the resources used and taught during the module. This video will focus on undertaking a blood pressure. We hope you find it useful. Blood pressure can be defined as the force exerted by the blood on the walls of the arterial blood vessels. When the left ventricle contracts, it pushes blood into the aorta, causing an increase in pressure termed systole. Diastole is when the heart relaxes and the pressure in the blood vessel decreases. Blood pressure is measured in millimetres of mercury and is written as a fraction, with the systolic reading on the top and the diastolic reading on the bottom. Systolic is the first measurement taken and relates to the increased pressure when your heart pushes blood out. The diastolic reading is the second measurement taken and relates to the decreased pressure when your heart relaxes. Blood pressure is dependent on cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. This can be shown as blood pressure equals cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance. To obtain the correct radial pulse position for the blood pressure assessment, firstly ensure that the patient is well rested. Support the patient's arm with a pillow to ensure comfort. Position the patient's arm with their palm and wrist facing upwards. Place your index and middle fingertips over the inside of the patient's wrist in alignment with their thumb. The radial artery can be found within the groove down from the base of the patient's thumb between the radius bone at the edge of the arm and the tendon in the centre of the forearm. To obtain the correct brachial pulse position, firstly ensure that your patient is sitting in an upright position and is rested. Support their arm with a pillow at the same level as their heart. Position their arm with their palm and wrist facing upwards. Ensure their elbow is extended to access the brachial artery at the anticubical fossa. To help you locate the brachial artery, you can ask your patient to bend their arm up and feel for the bicep tendon that runs through the midline of the anticubical fossa using your index and middle fingertips. Once this tendon has been found, ask your patient to re-extend their arm. The brachial artery can be found to the body side of this tendon. Lightly use your index and middle fingertips to locate and palpate the pulse. It is vital to ensure correct cuff placement to provide an accurate blood pressure measurement. Firstly, Adjust the patient's clothing to allow adequate room to apply the cuff to the upper arm. Select an appropriate sized cuff. This is dependent on the circumference of the patient's upper arm. The width of the cuff should be 40% of the limb's circumference and the length should be 80% of the limb's circumference. The correct cuff size should be selected to ensure accuracy of the result and comfort for the patient. Ensure the cuff is fully deflated prior to the procedure. Locate the brachial artery and leave your fingers in position. With your other hand, place the cuff onto the upper arm, lining up the artery arrow on the cuff 2.5 cm over the located brachial artery and your fingers. Once the cuff is in position and the arrow is lined up, use both hands to secure the cuff. As you secure the cuff, ensure the size is correct. The cuff index should fit within the minimum and maximum range printed on the inside of the cuff. To be successful in undertaking an accurate blood pressure reading, you must adhere to the blood pressure assessment criteria. 
For each step of the criteria, you must also be able to offer the rationale or the why behind each step. It is therefore advised that you read up on the criteria from the resources available to you, such as textbooks and journal articles. To begin with, if not done already, prior to patient contact, you must wash and dry your hands and ensure all equipment is decontaminated and in good working order. Introduce yourself and explain the procedure and gain consent. To begin with, check if your patient is showing any strong emotions, is experiencing any pain or has smoked 30 minutes prior to taking the blood pressure reading, as these factors can all result in elevation of your reading. Prepare your equipment, including choosing correct size of cuff and cleaning the stethoscope. The patient should be in a seated position with the selected limb supported. Adjust the patient's clothing to facilitate the cuff whilst maintaining privacy and dignity. Locate the brachial artery and apply the cuff. Using the radial pulse, estimate the systolic pressure by inflating the cuff until the pulse reading disappears and then deflate the cuff fully. Place the stethoscope over the brachial artery. Inflate the cuff to 20 to 30 millimetres of mercury above your estimate reading. Then immediately release the pressure at approximately 2 millimetres of mercury per second. Listen for the systolic and diastolic Kurofkov sounds. Ensure that your patient is comfortable and give feedback on the result as appropriate. Once completed, record the measurement accurately. If at this point you are leaving the patient area, you must decontaminate your hands. Report any abnormalities or significant variations from previous recordings to your mentor. It is important to accurately record the systolic pressure estimate. This is to estimate the systolic blood pressure, prevent overinflation of the cuff and prevent any discomfort to the patient. Firstly, locate and palpate the radial pulse using your index and middle fingertips. Inflate the cuff until the radial pulse can no longer be felt. The disappearance of the radial pulse represents the systolic pressure. Note this reading as the systolic blood pressure estimate. Deflate the cuff quickly and fully. Reinflate the cuff 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above the estimated systolic blood pressure. For example, if you obtained a systolic estimate reading of 120 millimetres of mercury, on reinflation of the cuff, you would need to inflate it to a maximum of 140 to 150 millimetres of mercury. It is vital that you familiarise yourself with the use of a stethoscope, as poor technique and faulty equipment may result in an inaccurate blood pressure reading. Prior to use, ensure that the earpieces, diaphragm and bell are all cleaned in adherence to infection control precautions. Set the earpieces to face slightly forward and insert into your ear canals to ensure correct position. Ensure that the diaphragm is on by gently tapping it. Turn the stem and gently tap the diaphragm again. The on position is from the loudest sound obtained. The Korotkov sounds were named after Dr. Korotkov who discovered them. These sounds are used to identify the systolic and diastolic blood pressure readings. They are often faint but distinctive and easily recognisable with practice. Use the stethoscope's diaphragm to amplify the Korotkov sounds. Lightly place the stethoscope diaphragm over the brachial artery. Do not press hard or place the stethoscope under the cuff as this will partially occlude the brachial artery and may cause discomfort and skin damage to the patient. When the cuff pressure deflates just below the systolic pressure, a clear but faint tapping sound will appear. The sound appears due to transient and turbulent blood being able to freely flow through the brachial artery. This first sound is your systolic blood pressure reading. As the cuff continues to deflate, this tapping sound may initially get louder, then begin to fade as the brachial artery is no longer constricted. Once the tapping sound has disappeared, this is the diastolic blood pressure reading. I can need to do your blood pressure reading now, would that be okay? That's fine. Which arm would you prefer me to do the reading on? I've been using this one. Okay, so if you could just uncross your legs and sit up for me. 
Is that comfortable? That's fine, thank you. We'll use this pillow to make it comfier. And I'm just going to get my equipment ready. going to inflate the cuff now. If it's uncomfortable, just let me know. A normal blood pressure range for adults includes a systolic range of 90 to 140 millimetres of mercury and a diastolic range of 60 to 90 millimetres of mercury. A blood pressure result less than 90 over 60 millimetres of mercury is termed hypotension. A blood pressure result more than 140 over 90 millimetres of mercury is termed hypertension. An ideal blood pressure range is 90 over 60 millimetres of mercury to 120 over 80 millimetres of mercury. Normal ranges for blood pressure for infants and children are dependent on specific age ranges. Therefore, as child nurses, please ensure you read up and familiarise yourself with the specific ranges identified using the academic resources from the module. There are many reasons as to why a patient may be experiencing hyper or hypotension. It is advised that you read up on the common causes from the academic resources available to you. You must be able to start recognising common causes and communicate concerns to your mentor and start initiating appropriate treatment in conjunction with the medical team. Some possible causes of hypotension include infection, shock, dehydration, hypovolemia, medications, arrhythmias and pregnancy. Some possible causes of hypertension include stress, exercise, medications, pyrexia, pain, cardiac disease, diet, ethnicity and age. Once you have completed the blood pressure assessment, you must accurately document the value recorded on an appropriate observation chart used in practice such as the National Early Warning Score 2 or the Paediatric Early Warning Score charts. We hope you have found this clinical skills revision video useful. Remember, revise the observation criteria for each skill and practice as much as you can. Use appropriate academic resources to underpin your knowledge. <laughs>